IT is one of the places where it's at. There's huge growth everywhere. One of the things you get out of a Curtin degree is programming skills. We are really good at teaching students programming and turning out really good coders. Curtin's IT and computing courses are the cutting edge of technology. We deal not just with established practices, but we involve our research into our teaching. So you're always dealing with new and upcoming facets of that technology. When a student gets a degree from Curtin, they get a degree from Curtin, not Curtin Singapore, or Curtin Malaysia or Curtin Bentley. So that means we have to have the same standard across all of the campuses. We have close industry ties that support us both in our research and our teaching, but also in industry placement. You're learning from world-class academics and educators, and that reflects in what you receive in your education. My name is Tian, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our info session on the Bachelor of Information Technology program at Curtin Singapore. This is a part of an online webinar series on program info session of Curtin Singapore's new bachelor degrees in information technology, data science, and cybersecurity. This series aims to provide you with key information about our programs and for you to find out how you can future-proof your career with a degree from Curtin University. In this webinar, I would like to thank you, our participants and our speakers, Dr. Hannes Herman and Dr. C. Teng So, who are dialing in with us from Perth, Australia. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the session, please click on the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen and type in your questions. I bring them up at the end of the session and we will have time for questions and answers. Now, without any further ado, I will hand over to Dr. Hannes Herman and Dr. C. Teng So. Our speaker today are senior lecturers from the School of Electrical Engineering, Computing and Mathematical Sciences at the Curtin University Faculty of Science and Engineering. Dr. Hannes Herman, over to you, please. Thank you, Tim. I'm uh, very happy to be here with you, if virtually today. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, uh, let me introduce myself. My name's Hannes. I'm the course coordinator of the computing courses at the undergraduate computing courses at Curtin University. So that means if there are any questions about the courses, I'm probably the best one to be asking. Um, obviously, all the courses are created in consultation with all of the faculty, but in the end, if there's something that needs to be dealt with, that's it's my name on it. So yeah, um, talk to me about it. Um, I've been with Curtin for quite a while. I actually started at Curtin's Malaysian campus um, quite a long time ago. And one of the really unique things in Curtin is that um, we do have those offshore campuses and they all work together to some degree. Let me tell you a bit about the uh, courses in general, and then uh, we'll get more specific leading into computing and then my colleague um, So will take over a bit later. To start with, we are very, very industry facing. We believe that it's not enough to just talk about theory, to put slides up on a, a board and you know talk about the things behind that. We absolutely need to do that as well, but everything has to be based firmly in reality which is a bit unusual for a lecture to say, admittedly, um, especially me, um, my background is in pure mathematics. But that's really the difference. We have a lot of industry partners. So we have the Optus um, Center for AI as part of our um, school. We work with the Innovation Center and a lot of our students um, go on to solve problems for industry while they're still studying. We work with various branches of the West Australian government, many companies, Woodside, Tellers, Atlassian, our industry partners don't just say, yep, you've got a good course. They do all sorts of things. Last week, um, uh, a, um, an industry person called Glenn Butcher came in and talked to my capstone students. 
So Glenn has run uh, the programming department at Atlassian in the Eastern States. He's run a uh, Amazon um, programming team across three different continents. He's now a venture capitalist and he get, gets startups off the ground. And because of the contacts, we were able to get to him to come in and talk to the students about the real world. How do you go and get a startup off the ground? How do they use what they've learned with us in the real world? And of course, the students are then able to ask him questions. Now, when Glenn comes in and talks to my students at Bentley, that is streamed live to all of our other locations. So we can get students in Sri Lanka or Malaysia or Singapore to hop online and also be asking um, uh, people like that questions. We also get real problems from industry. That varies in scope. It might just be a you know, example or case study we use all the way up to industry placed PhDs. So again, we had a former PhD student um, come in and talk about technology stacks. And that particular um, PhD student had been placed with a local company and did the PhD with Curtin while embedded in a local company working on real world things. So that's the sort of authenticity we're looking for. There is a certain amount of co-design and we're increasing that. Um, but the work experience is a really big thing because, again, our students are very sought after. The companies are actually competing for the best students. And that means they try to get students in over the summer, between the second and the third year quite often, just to get a taster. And many students then get a job offer before they've actually finished their degree because the company has seen their skills and is able to uh, you know, say, yes, this is somebody we want. I'm not as familiar with the tech market in Singapore. I know Singapore is very strong in all areas of technological development, but in Australia, the tech market is really taking off. Even in Perth, which is considered fairly quiet, there is a huge demand for new workers. So that competition is becoming quite fierce. And of course, we have a formal industry advisory board. And when we do something like propose a new course or update a course, we take those changes to the industry advisory board and they tell us, yes, this is a good idea. No, this is a bad idea. Yeah, look, that's fine, but have you considered, et cetera? And we do listen to them. That doesn't mean we do everything they say because some of what they say may not be uh, able to be managed inside you know, the resources we have, for example. And sometimes it takes a little while to change things. But they are there because they use our graduates, they hire our graduates, and their interest is in making our graduates as good as possible so that the final product, the students that they hire, suits their needs as much as possible. And there's a range of ways that we assure that that happens. One of the things that surprises a lot of people is that if you want to study computing, it's not enough to just code. If you're a really, really good coder, but you can't talk to people, that is generally a bit of a problem. So what you really need is an experience at working with others. There's actually a term that the industry uses for somebody who can, um, uh, you know, is really, really good at coding, but not very good at, you know, social skills. Um, well, there's actually several terms, but the polite term is a prima donna. And the big areas, they will often have one of these people around because they, you can give them a problem and they'll go ahead and solve it. And they don't want to be bothered with lesser people. But mostly the staff have to be able to work in a team. That, of course, means the students need people around them and they need to learn while they're studying about interaction. We want to not just teach that, but also teach it by example. Our staff are normally teaching 
not because you know they, they can't do industry or something, but because teaching is what we really want to do. Most of us, of course, could get notably more money if we went out into industry. We want to talk to students and what we get out of the job is seeing the students um, graduate. Um, I still get emails or LinkedIn comments and that from students from five, six, ten years ago saying, oh, Hannes, I'm now with Microsoft or I'm now with this one or now I've started my own company or whatever. And that is really why we do the job. So you will have staff um, who are looking after the course at Bentley who really want to help students. But normally you are actually going to not be talking to us because, look, I'm far away. Yes, I'll drop past Singapore occasionally. But most of the time, you'll be talking to your local staff members. They will be chosen the same way. The staff in Singapore will be available for student appointments. You won't just see them you know, formally in lectures and classes, whatever. You can talk to them. And that's especially the case later on when you start doing projects and the like. It is a much less formal relationship, a more of a collegial relationship once you're doing those final year projects or research projects. A relationship, not quite between equals, but very close to it. The other thing is you really want a lot of people around you, peers. So building up that community of students, obviously Singapore doesn't have that just yet because the course hasn't started yet, but that is one of our priorities. Um, uh, the student body in uh, Bentley helps us a lot. They talk to the students, they talk to industry. I understand that the student group in Bentley has actually reached out to Singapore and um, is talking with your campus already about how um, things can be done to support students. We are recognized by industry in Perth, which means there's that interaction as well. We have industry coming in, we have students going out to industry. We get a lot of contacts back from industry. So I got a call from a former student last year saying, hey, look, I'm part of a new company in Perth. Can you come and have a look? So I went off to the company called Blue Sky Digital. They want to hire like 20 or 30 people um, this year. So they wanted to get back in touch and you know talk about how to access our students and that sort of thing. Most importantly, all of that feeds back into our courses. So when a student says, hey, look, maybe you should try doing this, we will actually listen. Um, one of my units, um, which won't be offered in Singapore next year, um, Theoretical Foundation Computer Science, one of the students said, look, the maths lecturer um, is doing the tutorials this way. Why don't you have a look? And I went off and I asked the maths lecturer, attended some of her tutorials, and actually the way she was running tutorials was very appropriate for that unit. So I changed the way I run tutorials in that particular unit. And we're not going to, again, follow all students' suggestions, obviously, but the point is the courses are there for the students to learn. So sensible suggestions are very welcomed and feedback is very welcomed. So it is a whole community and that's a big difference. We have students coming in and they're actually very surprised that, hey, I can actually talk to these staff. Um, I don't know why they're surprised. I think every university should be like that, but um, there it is anyway. So that is part of the um, part of where we're going. Let me, here we go, change the slides. Just takes a little while. Um, all of that is really nice, but in general, if you're in computing, or in fact in any part of Curtin, you're going to benefit from a whole bunch of global industry partnerships, whether it's our partnership with um, Atlassian, with Cisco. So, for example, in the course you're, um, we're talking about today, there are Cisco certifications embedded in the course. Um, we are negotiating with Amazon because we're including Amazon Web Services, and therefore what can Amazon um, give us that we can pass on to the students. We talk to Atlassian, who's a Estonian company, but an internationally famous one, and they give us free access to quite a bit of their software so that our students can use it um, and learn how to use it properly, just like it's used in industry, and that benefits Atlassian and benefits us. So we do work with industry and we look for partnerships wherever possible. 
The other thing is we're not just going to stand and deliver. At the moment, that's what I'm doing, unfortunately, but that's because the nature of this webinar is a little bit restricted. If we were in a classroom, things would be slightly different. So I might be using my iPad to draw things. I might put up a quiz and you can open up your phone and you know follow along and put answers to questions in. I, might, I would get you to you know, form groups and discuss things with each other and present your solutions. The point is the old style of just delivering information isn't really appropriate for our modern day. And yes, it still happens, but we have a lot of education for our staff to try to make sure that life is a bit more interesting than that. And of course, that whole move between online and in-person has also been um, very interesting these last few years of COVID. We have a rather large range of courses. Um, uh, one of the things is, of course, that our Bachelor of Computing and Bachelor of IT, the one we're talking about today, is designed to be a three-year course because you, in Bentley, we do that in semesters. So you do two semesters a year, a total of six semesters, that's, that's a three-year course. In Singapore, you're going to be taking those units in trimesters. That means you don't get as much of a break um, uh, in the middle of the year. So our students will get a break from the end of November through to um, late February, which is a really long, enjoyable summer break for students to go to the beach and whatever. You won't get that. But what you will get is another study period in there, and you'll end up doing your six study periods in two years, which means you are out in industry a year earlier. I still like the slow method, but I can definitely see the attraction of doing a three-year course in two years. Um, we do have to make sure that your experience is going to be equivalent to that of the other campuses. It's really important that all of our degrees are the same you're taking the same materials, you're getting the same level of resources, you sit the same exams. When you get a degree at the end, you don't get a degree from Curtin Singapore. Our students don't get a degree from Curtin Brentley or Curtin Australia. Every student that gets one of our degrees gets a Curtin degree. It doesn't say where you got it from because all of our campuses offer an equivalent experience. Now, I won't say an identical experience because some of the work is localized. For example, one of the early units involves a lot of um, local knowledge and about the um, local Aboriginal people in Australia. And some campuses will localize that unit to include some content that is more appropriate for the location. The courses are equivalent rather than identical. And that's exactly how it should be. Now, I haven't seen the Singapore facilities. Um, if you, you, there's a tour available, so please contact um, the Singapore campus if you want to go and have a look at them. Um, I would like to talk briefly about the accreditation situation. If you go at the moment, look at the Australian Computer Society, you probably won't see Singapore on that list yet. Um, you might, I haven't checked today. It, it, it's probably going to be there sometime shortly but when you do see it there you're not going to see it as fully accredited you're going to see it as provisionally accredited that doesn't mean that the ACS has a problem with this offering in Singapore but the way accreditation works first of all all our accreditation is delayed at the moment because the accrediting panel has to visit each campus to make sure that the quality is the same We've had very, very good reports about our level of quality going out to campuses, but because of COVID, those visits haven't been able to happen. So at the moment, we have somewhat provisional accreditation for each of our different campuses until the, the panels can go out, visit that campus and say, yes, everything's still fine and that. The other thing is, until a campus has had graduates, you may not be able to get the full accreditation, you have the provisional one. Then as soon as the first graduates are there, we report that to the ACS and they say, okay, that's fine. And then you get the full accreditation. That doesn't affect the level of the worth of your degree, because of course, by the time you get the degree, we have graduates and therefore that's all good, right? Um, 
so I did want to raise that because I'm sure some people will look at that list of accredited degrees and go, oh, hang on, what's going on? And I know some of the people in Singapore have been saying that. Our discipline lead, Anish, is currently talking with them. Um, and there's a few things that, um, you know, we're in discussion about to get that added. They basically need a formal process to be followed, and we are doing that. The other thing I want to say is it's a three-year degree, or for two, for you, two years. A lot of locations aren't really used to three three-year degrees. They're used to four-year degrees, especially in software engineering. With our science degrees, it's designed as three years, or so six study periods, so for you, two years. But there is the option of adding on an honours year, a fourth year. Now, at the moment, Singapore doesn't offer that honours year, but you could have always come to Perth to do that if you wanted to. And in fact, that's something else I should mention. Because our courses are equivalent everywhere, if you do a couple of study periods in Singapore and you say, well, you know, I would like to spend uh, one study period over in Mauritius and I want to do a one study period there. And then maybe I want to go to Perth for the rest of my studies. That's fine. As long as you're going to locations that have the same course, then there's no problem going to another study location because it's all equivalent. There is a bunch of paperwork though. I have to admit that you have to fill out a bunch of stuff and um, there's staff on hand that can help you with that. But everything these days works on, well, paperwork, mostly electronic, of course. So there's a lot that we can offer you. Um, I'm really proud of our course. So let me actually start talking briefly about the course before I hand over to So. We have, of course, a lot of courses. Even just at computing, we have a range of undergraduate courses from Bachelor of IT, Bachelor of Computing. We have some majors in science. We are looking at a new engineering major. Today, we're really just going to be talking about the Bachelor of IT because that's what that's what today's about or tonight. And that is also a course that's going to be offered in Singapore. Um, we also have a range of postgraduate offerings. So if you want to go and do honors or masters by research or a PhD, that's fine. But again, we're just going to focus on that one undergraduate course today. Now for, I will mention briefly with the postgraduate offerings, the research only ones, they can be done remotely. So for example, I have had, actually I don't currently have, but I have had um, PhD students at our Sri Lankan partner campus. It's not a full curtain campus, but it's a partner of ours. So those students will have generally a supervisor there and a supervisor at Bentley. And then we make sure we're talking regularly with those students online and try to visit them every year or two as well. So even if the postgraduate offerings aren't immediately available at Singapore, that doesn't mean they're not up for discussion. But we will talk about the BIT today, or rather um, my colleague is going to do that shortly. Before I let him talk specifically about that, let me tell you a little bit about the general structure. We've designed the Bachelor of IT and the Bachelor of Computing to be fairly interoperable. You can change between them to some degree. The Bachelor of IT is a bit of more of a general degree. The Bachelor of Computing is really focused on coding. First year is fairly similar. The last year, the really important part is the capstone project. The capstone project is where the, really the industry part comes in. It's a real world project with a real client who wants the group of students that you're working with to design a solution for them. And when you've designed that solution, that might then go on the Apple App Store or you know on the Google Store, or maybe it just gets used by that company. Maybe it ends up being, you know, making money or whatever. Some of that is charitable. We our students do work for the Institute for the Blind. We had some people work with researchers that helped some pearl divers in Indonesia, no, sorry, it was in Vietnam, get additional funding to look after their health. Um, uh, 
our students work at our, across a range of different areas, health, architecture, engineering, design, business, all of that by providing solutions to real people using real industry processes, that's the capstone that pulls everything together in the third year. And all of our students have to do a capstone. It's very important. Anyway, I think I've talked enough for the moment and I'll now hand over to the next slide. Um, my colleague, Dr. So, who incidentally was also my PhD supervisor some time ago. So please um, welcome Dr. So. Thank you, Hannes. So welcome everyone and good evening. Uh, I'm quite happy to be here with you. And basically you see what uh, we will be discussing tonight is concentrating on the Bachelor of Information Technology. For first, let me introduce myself. My name is, of course, Hitang So. So I got my degree from the US a long, long time ago. And I also have joined Curtin a long, long time ago. I came in uh, 2001. And now I'm still here because, of course, I'm happy in teaching the units and also see working here. Um, my research area, because I'm also doing research, is in uh, computer networks. So basically in general about net networking. And co coincidentally, the focus of the Bachelor of Info Technology is also on the uh, network, yeah? So I just want to briefly show in here before I come back to discuss about, you know, the, what's that, the uh, cost structure, yeah? So as we can see here, then basically the focus of the Bachelor of Information Technology is on networks and distributed system, yeah? However, the degree also, so when we talk about networks, obviously that we discuss about, to say, uh, multiple uh, uh, computers, yeah? Okay? However, see, in the unit, I mean, in the structure, we also will focus on uh, system programming. So, in this case, you see, we, we will discuss or you will learn about to see uh, what is need to be done in a local system, yeah? Sorry, I want to come back. Let me see. Sorry, I, I want to... Can you help me? I want to go back to the previous slide. Thank you. So the first slide. Okay, thank you. So that's why you see in here for the cost structure, the focus of this better info information technology is on that area. Like what Hannes has said, Right in computing here, we offer different uh, majors or different courses, and it will em put emphasis on different area. Yeah, again for the better information technology, the focus is on networkings. Yeah, and also on the system admin. Yeah, however, see like for other courses this course in information technology okay uh, try to also put balance between theory and 
practice yeah so this why in this case right some of the units like you know operating systems uh, say computer communication okay are uh, more focused on the um, theoretical part of computing while some others, let's say, like that computing topics, let's say, like the um, distributed networks, yeah, and others, okay, put more focus on more practical area. Although obviously that for each unit, also you will learn about the um, what's that the theory, yeah. In terms of the structure. The semester in there basically is equivalent to your trial semester in Singapore, right? So although you see it is listed there as three years, it is for uh, Curtin Bentley here and all the other uh, campuses yeah, that work in semesters. For the design of the structure, in fact, you see, we got the feedback or suggestion from our industry partners. So we have uh, industry uh, groups that help us or give us feedback yeah, on what is needed in the industry, for example. So that's why you see the structure itself is quite dynamic, yeah, meaning that from time to time, um, it changes based on you see, the need in the area. For example, now we know that security is among other important things. Yeah, one of the most important things in terms of computing. So that's why for the cost structure in uh, IT. We also uh, give students some fundamental concepts on data security, let's say. And for the computing topics, let's say, basically you see the unit will teach students, okay, how to make systems, yeah, or how to write programs such that, you see, it is secure, let's say both in Linux and also in uh, Windows, okay? Back to the structure, let's say, okay? So for the, the course itself does not require students to have prior knowledge in computing, okay? Or programming. So first, in the fundamentals of programming, the unit will teach students from basic, yeah, from, from the beginning, okay, about Python programming. Yeah. After that, then in trimester two, let's say, okay, data structure and algorithms will be the follow-up unit, for example, for that fundamentals of programming. So you notice here then, one unit can be the prerequisite for another unit. Yeah. So that's why in this case, it's important that students, okay, complete the unit step by steps. Yeah. Starting from the beginning towards the end. Yeah. Okay. So for example, again, that fundamentals of programming will be the prerequisite for data structure and algorithms. Okay. And like what Hannah said, yeah, then the cost structure, I mean, uh, 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 basically, we, we include, let's say, um, uh, exposure to industry, let's say, yeah. So among others, let's say, you know, for some of the units, we use 
the lab from also from the uh, Cisco, let's say, yeah, and some other units also use the uh, uh, was that the um, access to cloud computing, let's say, okay. So the other thing is for the lecture, let's say, for each unit, the unit contains lectures. Also, see the unit also contains uh, practical. So typically, you see two or three hours lecture, two hours, let's say, and then lab or tutorial or workshop. Yeah. So commonly, based what we the we do right for 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 each of the unit okay so in terms of um what you can do after you should graduate from our course is that among others you see i just want to share with you right as part of the accreditation basically we also need to check if let's say you see the uh, graduate from this course, let's say, can go to what type of jobs in the industry, yeah? So we find that after a uh, serious mapping, right? That among others, the graduates can work as customer support service, let's say officer, right? Network administrator, web developer, and so on and so forth, yeah? So in fact, you see, like uh, Hannes also had said that our graduate, you see, have successfully got jobs in the uh, industry, yeah? And, okay. So as part of, you know, our survey, let's say, we find that basically, you see, 91.67% uh, yeah, of our students got you see, uh, jobs and 42.86% of the students yeah, uh, were studying offshore. Yeah? So uh, for the VIT, let's say, right, the course is offered, uh, for example, in Sri Lanka, in Mauritius, and in Dubai and also in Malaysia, yeah? So this shows, you see, what uh, some of our graduate has said about our program, yeah? And of course, you see, from time to time, you see, it's individual lecturer also get that uh, positive comments, basically, right? And yeah, they said for for me, and thank you for watching and listening.